Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna to be looking at a very recent study finding higher Parkinson's disease rates around golf courses and people that live there. Maybe there's a price to be paid for fluorescent green, massive, weedless swaths of land. At first I was like, is it from living so close to a sport that is not a real sport? I'm joking, I've had some fun playing golf myself in the past, but we're gonna tee up that research for you and look at the potential mechanisms and really what the researchers are calling out and really the far-reaching implications of this in a completely different area as well. You can think on that and try to guess that. I know that's really annoying of me, but hey, you can get your gears going a little bit and let's just go. And I just wanna say that I'm currently in California and longer than I expected, so I don't have my real camera. This is just my phone and a little lapel mic and some background noise, so hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. For those that don't know, Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease. It's really the result of a loss of production of dopamine cells, cells that make dopamine in your substantia nigra, a certain area of your brain. And believe it or not, dopamine is highly linked to movement. So that leads to the movement disorder that Michael J. Fox has, if you're familiar with him. And as for what golf is, uh, you're just gonna have to Google that one. Anyway, let's get into the basics of the study. The study looked at 140 different golf courses in Minnesota and Wisconsin, and then looked at how close people live to those golf courses comparing people who were further away and closer. And the results were, after adjusting for various factors, people who lived within one mile of a golf course had 225% the risk of Parkinson's disease as those that lived six miles or more away. This chart really emphasizes the curve, closer to golf, more Parkinson's disease, further from golf, less Parkinson's disease. Like you really wanna be 10 miles plus away. So in the realm of golf courses alone, these implications are huge. We're talking 17,000 golf courses, and that's covering over 2 million acres in the US alone. But about half of all golf courses are in the US. And this is where they were like, is this something in the water? Literally, and they investigated that. They found that individuals living within water service areas with a golf course had nearly double the risk of Parkinson's disease. But this is the point where I should quickly mention that of course, this is an epidemiological study. So we're looking at association, not causation. However, we gotta start somewhere. And especially when we're talking about long chronic diseases in large populations, oh, we're not gonna be doing a randomized control trial on this anytime soon. We can get into some experimental animal stuff, which you know I don't like in a bit, but it exists. And the researchers and the funding appear to be reputable as well. It wasn't done by crackpots trying to sell pesticide detoxes or those romantically scorned by Tiger Woods trying to take down golf. With this study, you'll never be able to womanize again, Tiger. And I'm legit realizing right now that for like 13 years of my life, I lived very close to a golf course and I would go and search for golf balls in the water. So it could be the literal golf balls in the water. But yeah, this seriously suggests some type of runoff and what type of runoff? Well, anybody is gonna run off the golf course if they see me swing in that club. <laughs> I'm joking, of course they're talking about pesticides. They say, quote, these findings suggest that pesticides applied to golf courses may play a role in the incidence of Parkinson's disease for nearby residents. It is at the point where golf companies have actually lobbied to use pesticides more freely, spending well over a million dollars. Okay, so what type of pesticides are typically spread on a golf course while well, we have this study? <laughs> oh my gosh. In the US, we're looking at between 200 and 250 different pesticide active ingredients that are registered for use on golf courses. Oh, this is gonna be fun, finding a needle in a haystack. But some pesticides are more commonly used on golf courses, but they wouldn't have any you know, direct connection to Parkinson's disease, would they? Well, from the study itself, for years, pesticides, including organophosphates, all of these things like 2,4-D, organochlorines, and et cetera, are known to be associated with the development of Parkinson's disease, have been used to treat golf courses. So next time you're on a golf course, instead of shouting four, you should shout to 4D because yeah, that stuff is just being blasted. No, because getting hit in the nuts with a glorified weighted ping pong ball ain't nothing compared to getting a neurodegenerative disease. And this brings us to an organophosphorus compound, which has gotten a little bit of attention around this, and that is glyphosate, glyphosate, whatever you want to call it, which is the active ingredient in Roundup, which is by Bayer Monsanto. And we actually have an entire paper on Parkinson's and glyphosate in one of the Lancet's journals, like this one. So the inadequacy of current pesticide regulations for protecting brain health case of glyphosate and Parkinson's disease. And this Lancet paper raises several points, first of which, you know, a lot of these are animal studies, which have a few problems, first of all. These people are chronically exposed, yet you know the time span for these mouse studies might not be as long, and a lot of them 
are done by the industry itself, and they might you know, suppress certain findings. For example, this study author is at least claiming they've even omitted relevant findings related to glyphosate exposure and neurotoxicity in young rats. Also that a lot of times they're just testing that active ingredient and they're not testing the whole cocktail itself, which is like designed to be penetrating cells, etc., and can have or sort of synergetically neurotoxic effects. Another problem with those mouse studies is that because 60 to 70% of these substantia nigra really needs to be degraded to get symptoms, they might blast away 40% of the substantia nigra in mice over a few weeks and then see, oh, they're perfectly healthy mice. And they also particularly mentioned, quote, exposure to glyphosate is associated with higher levels of urinary neurofilament light protein, an indicator of neural damage in neurodegenerative diseases. And while they say the evidence is still inconclusive, it is biologically plausible that glyphosate is leading to nigrostracial cell death and hence a risk of Parkinson's disease. And for a little hint at a direct connection here, we have a sort of interesting and sad case of a strawberry farmer in Japan. He was like, hey, I don't really like this. Strawberry fields, not forever, and was self-harming. And he actually drank some glyphosate and ended up getting a Parkinsonism disease, which is categorized by Parkinson symptoms about a year later. So we got over some of the mechanisms there. And another is the connection between Lewy bodies and Parkinson's. Lewy bodies are involved in dementia as well. That's what Robin Williams, unfortunately, passed from. And we have a potential connection in the sense that various pesticides here can cause inflammation. But there's, of course, a connection between inflammation and Lewy bodies. And there could be something more specific we need to find in the future, but you know that's where I'd look. But this is where the study could have extremely far-reaching implications because yeah, there's about 2 million acres of golf courses in the US, but we have all of this cropland, which is basically a massive golf course that sums to a total of about 880 million acres. You know, we're just soaking that in really the exact same pesticides, depending on the application, but we're talking corn and soy getting sprayed with glyphosate. You know, when we're talking about Roundup, we're talking about Roundup ready crops, which were developed by Monsanto in the past, now Bayer Monsanto. They're literally bioengineered to be soaked in Roundup and not die while other plants around them die. From this UCLA study on workplace proximity to commercial applications of the pesticide Paraquat, we can see a similar two times odds of Parkinson's disease for the highest level of exposure. They also say the risk went up with the longer time that they were exposed and the more pesticides in terms of the amount that were sprayed. And when we're talking about causation, one of the potential factors is biological gradient, which means more exposure, more risk, and that supports causation as well. You know, it doesn't get us all the way there, but that's notable. And backing that, this meta-analysis also found about a two thirds increase odds of Parkinson's disease with paraquat exposure. We also have a 2024 preliminary study that looked at people in the Great Plains and Rocky Mountain region. We're talking about over 20 million people looking at Medicare data. And they looked at 65 different pesticides and found that 14 of them were associated with Parkinson's disease to various degrees. But again, it's preliminary and I'm like, just you got the data, just like do whatever you need to do to publish that because it's like, why would you just sit on that? and not publish it, come on. Oh wait, maybe because it costs like $5,000 to publish a study nowadays. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. And this of course got me thinking about how we use our pesticides and what we're using our pesticides on in our farming system, our commercial standard industrial farming system. And one inefficient way of course, is spraying a ton of them on a ton of crops to grow animal feed. One report found that more than 100,000 tons of pesticides are sprayed every year in the US to grow feed for livestock. And as the Independent reported, quote, more than 13,000 lawsuits have been filed in the US alleging that, that the pesticide, talking about glyphosate, causes non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, according to the researchers. And that's where being a completely different disease, we got to expand our scope here because just a Parkinson's connection is clearly not the whole picture. Another one that seriously needs to be explored is the potential cancer connection here. And we really need more data on this, but I can't help but think as somebody whose home state is Iowa, where we're basically a giant corn and soy field to feed animals, in particular pigs, we're the number one pig producing state with three times as many pigs as people, that you know there might be a connection to us being on the top of the charts for cancer rates per capita. Not to mention that industrial factory pig farms spew hydrogen sulfide gas, which fuels cancer as well. In the end, whether we're talking about 2 million acres of golf courses or 880 million acres of cropland, it's being soaked in pesticides 
probably way too much. So we need way more research into this. We need to be narrowing down exactly which of these chemicals is doing what. And we of course need to remedy it in any way possible. We're talking organic golf courses because I don't think people are just gonna stop golfing. And then also eating less meat because that obviously results in way less pesticides being used because we have that feed conversion ratio where one bite of meat is the result of usually depending on the actual type of animal, you know, 10 bites of plant matter that is grown and sprayed. And that doesn't even get us started on the amount of fertilizers that are used causing the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. So we need to move away from industrial farming that leads to all of that cheap meat and then uses virtually half of the contiguous US to produce. So subtracting grazing lands, you know, we're, we're soaking a good portion of the US in these exact chemicals that appear to be associated with Parkinson's disease. We need more research. And I am really curious about what we can explore with the water versus airborne exposure. I mean, look at pictures like this. People are wearing hazmat suits spraying this stuff, although most of it in farmland is sprayed by large tractors. But with the association with water consumption, it seems like that's a clear route. But you know, what is the result of different wind patterns and distances in terms of actual airborne pesticides? So yeah, let's solve this problem because when it comes to Parkinson's, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, cancer, etc., cetera, uh, golf score is better, lower is better. So yeah, let me know down below what you thought about all of this. Do you think it's just some random association? Is there any other reason that golf courses could be causing Parkinson's? Uh, in the comments below, of course, and also like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.